Right. In this video, I'm going to be proving for you that the row space and column space of a matrix have the same dimension, no matter the matrix. Okay, so I'm going to start off by supposing that I've got an M by N matrix. And I'm going to call it A. We're going to suppose the dimension of the row space of A is R. Okay, and then we're going to show that the dimension of the column space must also be R. Okay, so I'm going to start by kind of saying, okay, well, uh, the row space is a subspace, so I've got to have a basis out there somewhere for it. Um, and if the dimension is R, there's going to be R vectors in that basis. And I'll call that set S. And now I'm claiming that the set T, which is really kind of the image of set S under the map defined by matrix A, um, the set T, which is, you know, AX1, AX2, all the way up through AXR is going to be a linearly independent set. But that claim itself requires some justification, so I'm going to, you know, kind of commit you of that in light blue. Now, if we want to consider whether or not a set is linearly independent or not, we're going to be considering, uh, you know, the different ways that we can linearly combine the elements of that set to get the zero vector. Okay, so I'm going to consider some combination. Uh, that's giving me the zero vector. And I'm hoping to show you that C1, C2, all the way up through CR must all equal zero. And I'm gonna use uh, kind of the distributive property of matrix multiplication in reverse to factor out the A. And if you think about it, this, this is true. Um, and so I'm gonna factor that out and then I'm gonna kind of look at the stuff inside the parentheses and realize that that's just the sum of a bunch of vectors. It's actually, you know, a linear combination of the vectors in S. So what I'm going to say is that I could call this, uh, I could call this one vector V. So I'm defining V to be this C1, X1 plus C2, X2, all the way up through CR, XR, which when multiplied by matrix A is giving me the zero vector. Now, I am saying that V is definitely a linear combination of the vectors in row space of A, right? Because X1 through XR are the, are the basis for the row space. So, you know, any combination of those vectors is certainly going to be in that row space. Okay, so since it's a linear combination of, the vectors, uh, of vectors in the row space of A, V itself is definitely in the row space of A. But then also, V is going to be orthogonal to every row of A because when I do that matrix multiplication AV and I get zero, well, every component of the zero vector equals zero. So if you think about how I did that, I kind of did dot products of the rows of A with V. And if I got zero every time, that means that V was orthogonal to every um, row of A. And since the row space of A is all sorts of linear combinations of the rows of A, V will be orthogonal to every vector in the row space of A. Now, let's just think about that for a second, but that will be true, right? Because if you're orthogonal to every row, uh, you will be orthogonal to every combination of those rows, again, kind of by the distributive property of matrix multiplication. Okay. Now, if I've got V being an element of the row space, while also being orthogonal to every vector in the row space, that is going to mean that V has to equal zero. Okay, and um, because V is orthogonal to itself, and I'll kind of run back through that. I think I've shown you that already if you're in my class. So if uh, V is orthogonal to itself, that means that V dotted with V equals zero. Okay, V dotted with V is the length of V squared, and if the length of V squared equals zero, then the length of V is zero, and the only way that's possible is if V is the zero vector. So if V is the zero vector, we've got, you know, C1, X1 plus C2, X2 all the way, C2, X2 all the way through C, R, X, R combining to give me the zero vector. But the vectors X1 through XR are certainly linearly independent uh, because S is a basis for the row space of A. Okay? Um, so we've got the independence, and that means that C1 through CR must equal zero. Okay. okay. Now, beyond that, um, I've also got the fact that AX1, AX2, AX3, all the way up through AXR are clearly elements of the column space of A. 
And that's because a is, you know, um, on the left and I'm multiplying a times these vectors and well, these are all, you know, linear combinations of the columns. AX1 is a linear combination of the columns of A. AX2 is a different linear combination of the columns of A. Um, so these vectors that we're getting back are elements of the column space. They are linear combinations of the columns. So that means that T is a set of independent vectors in the column space of A. And we know that T is independent because it's a basis. Or no, 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 pardon me. Uh, how do we know that? Uh, yeah, that was what I spent all that time and all that writing in blue justifying was the idea that T was an independent set. All right, so T is a set of independent vectors that are all living in the column space of A, which means that the dimension of the column space is at least R, since there's R vectors in T. Okay, and this gives us the result that in general, the dimension of the column space of a matrix is greater than or equal to is at least the dimension of the row space. And you know, now we're going to think about a transpose. We're going to use that result that I wrote in red because it's going to be really important. Okay, using that result, we should have the dimension of the column space of a transpose is at least the dimension of the row space of a transpose. Okay, just like that. But we also know that the column space of the transpose is the row space of the original and that the row space of the transpose is the column space of the original. So that's telling me that the dimension of the row space is greater than or equal to the dimension of the column space. But previously, I'd said the dimension of the column space is greater than or equal to the dimension of the row space. And the only way that both of these things could be true at the same time would be for them to be equal. Now, um, I kind of, you know, put in an extra reason for that, that, okay, I'm actually just, you know, using that result, uh, the original result in red. The dimension of the column space of A is at least the dimension of the row space of A. And then you can see the dimension of the column space is squeezed in between the dimension of the row space of A, which is you know, not going to be less than itself. So that's where we're seeing that they must be equal. And now, equipped with that fact, it's going to be almost trivial to verify this uh, corollary that the rank of A and the rank of A transpose are going to be the same, right? Because that's really what the rank is, or the rank of the transpose is the dimension of the row space, and the rank dimension of the column space. Okay, but and I just showed you that the dimension of the column space of A is equal to the dimension of the row space of A and previously mentioned how the row space of A is equivalent to the column space of A transpose and the dimension of the column space, that's what rank is. And so that's just showing right there, or the rank of A is going to equal the rank of A transpose. And so really, that's the two things I needed to show you in this video. So I'm just gonna keep it short. That's gonna be all for this one. Thanks for watching.